all think that there are some things weird about Christmas. A virgin teens become pregnant. A baby who would save the world from its sins. A God who wanted to become a human being. That sounds weird stuff. But to us, the supernatural will always seem odd. As one person he say, has said, if miracles happen all the time, we would have called them ordinaries. Right? I think he's right. Brother and sister in Christ talk about something weird, something odd, something out of the ordinary. Imagine you are an honest, hardworking sheep tender, enjoying a calm evening of, on the hills outside the city of Bethlehem. And the Bible tells in Luke 2, 8 to 20, Yet the angel of the Lord appeared to them, announced the birth of the Savior, and they, responding in simple faith, came to worship the baby and went on their way telling the good news. Perhaps the question comes up, why were the shepherds chosen by God? Brothers and sisters in Christ, last year, in the Christmas Eve 2021, I had told you uh, the, the, the common story goes that the, the shepherds were poor and stinky dirty. But like many stories, sometimes they get spooned by culture over time. Yes, they may have been stinky and perhaps a bit a diesel, but they were not poor. As we've always been, uh, been told, actually they were higher up the social scale than that. Why? Alfred Ehrersheim, 1883, the author of The Life of, uh, and Times of Jesus the Messiah, the shepherds were extraordinary shepherds. They were called Levitical shepherds. They are fulfilling temple duties. And you know, the only ones who could perform temple duties were priests, right? It was written in the Mishnah. Mishnah is a, a group recorded oral tradition of uh, documents uh, that govern the Jewish people during the time of the Pharisees. These shepherds were in the countryside surrounding Bethlehem, not out in the wilderness where uh, regular sheep uh, were kept. So they must have been priests, okay? So why would priests perform many shepherding duties for the temple? It's because the sheep were intended to be sacrificed for Passover. Okay? It was the priest's job to make sure that the lamb were without blemish and completely unharmed before being sacrificed. <laughs> They required special treatment and observing. These Levitical shepherds have high responsibility. That's the reason they kept watch over their flock even though it was winter time. Another statement in the Mishnah says that the Messiah, in the, Mis uh, in the Mishnah, Messiah would be revealed from the Migdal Adam, which translates as Tower of the Flock. It was an actual tower that stood just outside town and within the temple priest's 
fields. So brother and sister in Christ, truly this Levitical shepherd, an angel appeared said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and laying in a manger. So in the, in the stillness and quiet of the night, the shepherd watched their sheep. Without warning, they are confronted by a heavenly messenger, an angel of the Lord, and surrounded by the glory, the brightness of the Lord. Needless to say, the shepherds were frightened. What could this heavenly visitor want? Had they displeased God? Did the Lord have some special mission for them? Were they dreaming? The angel immediately put their fears to rest and their heart at ease by saying, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Do not be afraid. What a great word of comfort. You know, nearly a hundred times in the Bible, we find the word fear not or do not be afraid. To Mary, Luke 1:30, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. To Joseph, Matthew 1:20, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived is in her is from the Holy Spirit. Brother and sister in Christ, in this Christmas time, the Lord knows we have fears. It might be a financial fear. It might be we have some real enemies. It might have to do with our family or our health. It, might, it may be related to our walk with the Lord, but in every case, our fears can be calm if we will put our confidence in God. Amen? As you know, in, uh, Psalm is said in Psalm 118, 5, 7, when heart Press. I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortal do to, uh, do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. So now the question is, why did the shepherd have nothing to fear anymore? Because of good news. Because of good news. The angel's announcement is good news. It's not a common good news that you know, common good news announced that, like, Argentina is the winner of FIFA 2022. <laughs> no. But the good news of great joy that will be for all the people, he said. It is the gospel. The good news, which is explained in verse 11, Characterized by four things here. The good news is personal. 
For unto you, or I bring you, so this is, this is personal, good news, for you. Personal means special to you, relevant to your needs. I know you are a member of uh, several WhatsApp groups. Sometimes we receive congratulations just by copy pass, right? So that is not personal. That is not personal. Just copy pass, copy pass from someone else. The angel bring good news to the shepherd and to each one of you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. And Romans 10, 13. It is personal. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's why you must be glad because you are everyone. You are whosoever. You are part of everyone who call on the name of the Lord who will be saved. Secondly, the good news is present. Today, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Again, it is personal. Today means no, no more waiting, no need to delay. A Savior has been born to you. The Christ, the promised Messiah that the priest had heard about from the prophets, the Savior of the world was finally born. In the perfect time. And then for the Levitical shepherd, it means that the animal sacrifices were no longer necessary. Now Jesus would be the ultimate and perfect sacrifice to pay for man's sin once and for all through life, his death and resurrection. In 2 Corinthians 6, first, second, Paul quotes, In the time of my favor, I hurt you. And in the day of salvation, I help you. Like the shepherd, you know, who were changed their lives. They are no longer what the flock of sheep. But the proclaimers of good news. So the same we are. You and I are the ambassadors of Christ. Thirdly, this, the good news is practical. A savior. This is mankind's greatest need, right? Salvation. And that need has been met through the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Levitical shepherd knew that what lies in the manger is, is food for their flocks. They knew that the cattle is, uh, in, in their stable were for the sacrificial ceremony in the temple. And yet they saw the baby lies in the manger. So what does it mean? Here we see the wonderful message or symbol. When the baby Jesus is in the manger, this is a prophecy that one day he will become the spiritual food that gives life to us, his sheep. And later, Jesus became the Lamb of God who was sacrificed to atone for our sins. 
and made our lives to be the temple of God, His dwelling place. The good news is a fulfillment of prophecy. He is Christ the Lord. He is the Messiah, the anointed one of Israel, the Savior who had been prophesied of in the Old Testament and long awaited. Brothers and sisters in Christ, two weeks ago I and Ifani uh, watched a concert uh, performed by the Houston Symphony Orchestra and Choir. A composition of a George Frederick Handel, the Messiah. It's part of the composition is quite, uh, is quote from verses from the book of prophecy, uh, the book of prophets, including the good news that the angel brought. One of the composition is quoted from Isaiah 9:6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So you can uh, play this video. Just, just enjoy this uh, symphony.
Amazing. The angels rejoicing. First, 13, 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward man. As soon as the angel had finished his announcement, he was surrounded by a first multitude of angels, a heavenly choir, and they praised God loudly. Back to Handel's composition entitled The Messiah, at the end of the second part, it's closed by Hallelujah Chorus, you know it. And when I'm listening to handle Hallelujah Chorus, this composition was so grand and majestic. So no wonder when the first time this composition was conducted by George Frederick Handel himself, the King George II stood up to hear it. However, I can't imagine how much grander and more majestic it was when a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and the shepherd got a privilege to see and listen to them. Wow, amazing. And look, only recorded what the shepherd told him while he did not experience it, the, the, the author of uh, the Gospel look, as we are. But the shepherd experienced it personally, and of course this was a great joy to them. And composition that the heavenly host sing is glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill toward man. This multitude of the heavenly host praising God because indeed Jesus' birth brought glory to God. Jesus' birth brought peace on earth among people who, on whom his favor rests. This is a call for everyone who celebrates Christmas who accepts the birth of Jesus in their heart to always glorify God and bring peace. A child in a manger, verse 15, 16 says, And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that night the shepherds went to Bethlehem to see this thing that had taken place and they found the child lying in the manger. And I think this shepherd had no idea how much more that manger held. Not just a baby. This manger held the peace with which Jesus calmed the storm. This manger held the bread and feast that fed the 5,000 people. It held the new eyes by which the blind man saw. It held the new legs with which the lamb would walk. This manger held the living water given to Samaritan woman at the well. This manger held the freedom given to the woman caught in adultery. It held the beatitudes. 
It held the tears Jesus wept over Jerusalem. It held Lazarus new life. It held the cross that destroyed death. It held the Father forgive them that Jesus said from the cross. It held the open tomb of resurrection. This manger held the bread of life and the cup of salvation. So brothers and sisters in Christ, God wants you all to be like this manger which held Jesus Christ in this Christmas. God wants you to open your heart for Jesus Christ dwells in and brings you peace. And like the shepherd who saw the baby Jesus in the manger and they returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. Indeed, their lives were changed. So God wants you to be changed in this Christmas. That you return home with a new perspective of life. Always glorify and praise God as a new person. To be able to bring peace wherever you are. For Jesus the King, he is the Prince of Peace. He will then rule the world peacefully and increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. And you all should be able to be his agents of peace. Amen. I would close my sermon by telling this story. This is a, a famous story. You know Alfred Nobel. He was a Swedish scientist who patented 355 inventions, including artificial silks and leather. To him, a day without any new idea was a day waste. But he received his real fame and fortune in 1866 when he invented dynamite. In 1888, a newspaper in Paris made a mistake in reporting the death of Alfred's brother, Ludwig, mistaking one brother for the other. The headline read, the merchant of death is dead. Faced with this shameful death announcement, Alfred longed to change how others view him. So, the peace prize was born out of nobles frustration and desire to rewrite his on death notice. At the end of his life, the conscience stricken noble sought to pay for damage done as best he could by using his very fortune of six million dollars to promote life instead of destroying it. Nobel Peace Prize winners have taken us only a tiny distance on the road to peace. So brothers and sisters in Christ, as the shepherd, when they had seen the baby Jesus in the manger, they made now the brought the saying which was taught, the, taught them concern this child. Having seen the infant savior, the shepherd's heart were overflowing with excitement and joy. They had to tell others as they returned to their flock. They could not keep it in. Don't take what belongs to somebody else. Tell the story of God's grace. Tell where you found the living water, the living bread. Tell what you found in Jesus Christ. Tell where you see the Prince of Peace. Amen. Please take a silent moment in your own prayer.